<clears throat> so to conclude this topic, I know the, the video cut off, but the last thing we we're talking about was the, uh, uh, the two to three year group. Now the two to three year group have a mistake in their promoter. So by having a mistake in their promoter, uh, they produce twice as much CCR5 as the six to seven year group. So because of that, you know, uh, their infection rate is much higher um, from going from uh, having infection to getting full blown AIDS. The last group uh, has no infection. The reason they have no infection is because they don't produce CCR5 at all. So they have no genes producing CCR5. So this predisposes that group uh, to not, have, uh, not get uh, an HIV infection and not get AIDS. So this is an example here where we have a genetic component uh, that influences on whether you have, you get uh, a di an acquired disease, all right? And so where do we find this most among people? Well, we find it most among people of European descent. And the reason that it's found most among your people of European descent is because for like 300 years, there was a disease that showed up over and over again uh, in Europe, and that was the Black Plague. And the Black Plague is caused by a, a bacterium called Uracena pestis. And what Uracena pestis does is this bacterium grabs onto CCR5 to then invade into the cell and kill the cell from the inside out. So, uh, so both HIV and Uracena pestis use the same entry method, even though they're one's a virus and one's a bacteria. But what happened here in Europe was that people who didn't make CCR5 survive the Black Plague, and then they pass those genes on to their offspring. And so this is an example of natural selection found among humans. All right, let's uh, switch topics now and move on into bacteria. Now, bacteria are literally everywhere. And bacteria are prokaryotic cells. So these are cells that lack a nucleus uh, as apart from eukaryotic cells. And eukaryotic cells are cells that have a nucleus. Uh, so plants, um, are uh, eukaryotic, uh, animals are eukaryotic, um, fungus are eukaryotic, and so are protists, so these single-celled organisms that have a nucleus. So let's take a look at the uh, structure of, of, uh, of uh, bacteria. So look at all this, the stuff that they have inside them. So one, they have a plasma membrane. So if we look at this picture here, you're seeing like three different layers here. That innermost layer is their plasma membrane. Uh, so they have a plasma membrane, just like we have a plasma membrane. That is the boundary of the cell. It's made of a phospholipid bilayer embedded with proteins, just like ours. And it regulates what enters and exits the cell. Next, they have cytoplasm. So this jelly-like fluid within the cell is their cytoplasm. Uh, uh, and it suspends their cellular structures. Next, they have ribosomes. So all these little uh, dots there that we see, those are ribosomes. These are structures that synthesize proteins. All right, so we should know those stuff already. Uh, next is a nucleoid. So they have this nucleoid or nucleotide region. So this is a part of the prokaryotic cell where the DNA is located. So their DNA is in a single circular loop. Now I know it doesn't look like a loop. It looks like a big mess, but if you uh, spread it out, it would just be a big circular loop. So we say that they have one chromosome, okay? So next, uh, so the second layer in there is their cell wall. So the cell wall is a rigid boundary surrounding the prokaryotic cell, all right? So it's made of a peptidoglycan, which is a protein and polysaccharide complex. It provides cell shape and protection. Uh, next are plasmids. I don't have a picture of a plasmid, but what you would see is like a circular thing of DNA off to the side. So it's small circular DNA apart from the organism's chromosome, okay? Um, and so uh, they can pass these on between themselves. Next is an endospore. An endospore is a walled structure that forms around the DNA and some cytoplasm. So uh, if we go to this picture here, this is trying to show an endospore right there. This enables the cell to survive harsh conditions. And we'll talk about an endospore here in a little bit. Okay, back to the, the uh, bacterium there again. So uh, next you're seeing all these little hair-like structures right there. Those are called pili. Uh, pili are short projections on a bacterial cell that help the cell attach to objects and surfaces, all right, and other cells. So here, you know, uh, it, you know, water has an adhesive nature. If you just get two pieces of paper wet, they'll stick together. So by having these little extensions, by this guy just being a little wet, it's gonna help it stick to surfaces. 
Also, it's going to help with static electricity, so a couple things that we don't typically worry about holding us in any place. Next are flagella, so these are showing flagella there. Uh, these are long whip-like appendages, and they're used for motion. Uh, so this is showing some pili here on this guy. Here's showing flagella. You know, you can have them on one end or all different ends of uh, these little guys uh, all over the place. Okay. Um, so next is a glycocalyx. Now, a glycocalyx is a sticky outer layer uh, outside of the prokaryotic cell wall. All right. It consists of proteins and or polysaccharides. Uh, so if we go back to uh, this picture, like all the yellow there is trying to show that glycocalyx. Now, uh, a slime layer is a loose glycocalyx. And this picture here is showing a capsule, which is a firm glycocalyx. So functions here, uh, choose for attachment, uh, helps to resist drying out, and protects the host cell. Lastly, uh, this, I know it's hard to tell what's going on here, but these are thylakoids. Thylakoids are structures that absorb light energy. Uh, these are found in cyanobacteria. So, um, you know, they're found in photosynthetic uh, bacteria. Now, uh, a lot of this stuff, plasmids, endospores, pili, flagellum, uh, glycocalyx, and thylakoids are not found in all bacteria. So all bacteria have a plasma membrane, they all have cytoplasm, ribosomes, nucleoid, and a cell wall, okay? So let's look at uh, endospore here and make an endospore. So some bacteria, not all bacteria, but some bacteria have a two-phase life cycle. Uh, so they have a vegetative cell and an endospore. So here's the vegetative cell, uh, over here is the, uh, you know, endospore, okay? So uh, the vegetative cell is metabolically active and a growing entity. Uh, it can be envir environmentally induced uh, to produce an endospore. So if you look at this process uh, of sporulation, uh, this is a formation of an endospore. So here, uh, that vegetative cell is going to have, uh, you know, uh, a depletion of nutrients. So what the cell does next is it duplicates its chromosome. So that's what we see uh, occurring there. It duplicates a chromosome. And then the cell separates into a four spore and an endospore. Uh, so a four spore and a sporangium. Okay. Uh, so the four spore, uh, that is the part uh, that will become the endospore. And the sporangium uh, creates an endospore. So this is going to become the endospore. This is going to create that endospore. All right. So what happens here is the sporangium engulfs a four spore and synthesizes a spore layer. So here it engulfs it, now it's in, uh, creating those cellular layers around there. Once uh, you have a mature endospore, the endospore is released. Uh, so here's the endospore release and the sporangium dies, okay? So once we get to favorable conditions again, uh, then we can have germination. So germination, once favorable conditions have returned, the endospore swells and releases the vegetative cell. So it just grows out of that endospore. And we start this process over until uh, we get to unfavorable conditions again.